On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we are going to war. Okay, we're not actually going to war, but some interesting developments out of the autonomous selfie drone category when it comes to DJI and now Zero Zero Robotics. There's a lot to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. Let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company. Check them out online at thedroningcompany.com. Also, get subscribed to all of their social media platforms. You can find them just about anywhere, especially YouTube. In just a few weeks' time, we will be at CUAV, Commercial UAV Expo, in Las Vegas, Nevada, walking around the show, doing interviews with companies there. So, if you're interested in drone technology, that's a really great show for the industry, and it's going to offer a lot of information about what you can expect over the next year when it comes to developments in the industry so make sure you check out that content on the droning company i'll be there with friend of the channel sam carp as well as friend of the channel tim brazell and of course our friends from the droning company check them out online at thedroningcompany.com and again get subscribed to their social media platforms especially youtube and on top of my trip to las vegas nevada with the droning company for commercial uav expo 2024 i also have some other travel plans coming up that are going to keep me out of the office for about three weeks straight now i'm going to be in Boston, Massachusetts, the last week of August. I'll be then heading to Las Vegas for CUAV. And then on September 4th, I'm jetting a day early from the show. I'm actually headed to Melbourne, Australia for some drone related work. Really excited about that job and the opportunity to fly over there because Australia is on my bucket list. It's a place I've always wanted to visit. And having the opportunity to go and fly drones is going to be pretty awesome. That said, though, it will be difficult for me to keep the channel up to date. So I'm going to do my best to post at least two videos. If not, I'll try to get one up. If I go quiet for a little while on any social media platforms, I'm fine. I'm just on the road. I'm in different time zones and I've got a lot going on. So bear with me in case I don't quite keep up with what's going on in the world of drones while I'm on the road. Got a lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipeline, but enough about that. We're here to talk about the potential war brewing in the world of consumer drones, particularly the category of selfie drones and autonomous drones. Now, my last video talked about leaks for DJI's newest drone, the DJI Neo, and we speculated on some specs as well as capabilities of the drone and what we can expect from that drone. And I've got some updates here from our friend Jasper Ellens at Jasper Ellens 27 Leaks. Make sure you check him out on X or Twitter, however you refer to that, and get subscribed or actually, I guess it'd be follow him on that platform because he's got a lot of great information when it comes to the world of DJI leaks, especially. So let's talk about some of those new developments for the DJI Neo because it paints a better picture as to what we can expect for this drone. So the first bit of confirmed information is that the propeller cage guards are detachable. It looks as though the DJI Neo is going to be very similar in its build to the DJI Avada 2, albeit much smaller, uh, but you will require these cage guards for operations over people because the FAA's Category 1 ruling is that the propellers must be completely encased and or not cause laceration on contact with skin. So that's a big thing here. It seems like the propellers are going to be capable of laceration, which means these propeller guards, this, this cage style guard will be mandatory for operations over people with the DJI Neo. It, you can take them on and off, so you don't plan on flying over people. You don't necessarily need them on board. You can go ahead and fly it just like you would the Avada 2 with those duct style propeller wraparounds. Uh, but if you do want to fly over people, the propeller cage guards will be available for you and you'll be able to use those so that you can be legit while flying over people. The next piece of information that we had confirmed by our friend Jasper Ellens is that this drone will utilize a snap-in style battery similar to the same type of battery used in the DJI Spark as well as the Mavic 1 and 2 drones but I'd say it leans more similar to the DJI Spark in that it appears it will be mounted on the underside of the drone and this fact should throw a red flag for those of us that are familiar with the fatal issue with the DJI Spark, as well as those of us that were unlucky enough to experience it firsthand. The DJI Spark had a real problem when it came to the battery falling out of the drone mid-flight. 
Yeah, that sounds crazy, but it's true. It happened, and it was a known issue with the Spark, and it's largely part of the reason why the Spark no longer exists is because the design of it, its body, and how the battery fit into it just wasn't practical. The fact that the DJI Neo is going to have the same style battery mount is a little bit concerning. Now, if there's one thing I will say about this, DJI is a company that innovates and fixes problems as they encounter them. They have a really great track record of that, so I would be willing to bet that we won't have the same issues with the DJI Neo that we did with the Spark, but it is important to understand that this is sort of the same design and we need to be ready for any potential issues that might involve that bottom battery mount. Now, luckily, this drone is very, very lightweight and the chances of something happening catastrophic in the event the battery would fall out and cause, cause a crash are minimal, slim to none, when it comes to damaging people or property beneath the drone in any significant way. The drone will probably be toast, but at least the, the actual collateral damage will be kept to a minimum. Now, moving away from our friend Jasper Ellens and the information and leaks that he provides us, according to Tech Radar, new information about the Neo points to a confirmed 4K resolution at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second. It will also host a half-inch CMOS sensor with a 12 megapixel lens and a field of view of approximately 117.6 degrees. Additionally, according to Tech Radar, the DJI Neo will tout a 22 gigabyte internal storage system with no way of upgrading that system to a larger capacity. It's not clear if that means there will be no micro SD card slot, but I would anticipate the purpose of this drone is to have it be an all-in drone system, meaning the data Data is recorded and processed within the drone's computer system and must be removed directly from the drone. There will be no go between with a external SD card slot or micro SD card slot that you can just take out of the drone and pop into your computer. That's much the same with the Hover Air X1. There is no SD card slot for the Hover Air X1. You actually have to plug the drone into whatever device you're using to lift the data out of and then process that data. I think it's going to be the same with the DJI Neo. On top of all of that, we already kind of figured this out in the previous leak video I did. The camera will be on a one axis gimbal, meaning all other forms of stabilization will be done digitally. That's some pretty exciting stuff from Jasper Ellens and Tech Radar, two really reputable sources of information in the world of drone technology and drone leaks. Now, speaking of reputable information, I do just want to take a moment here and apologize to you for some information that I included in my previous video regarding leaks on the DJI Neo. I just want to preface this by saying the world of leaks and processing through them, sifting through them, and understanding what's real and what's not is difficult, tedious, and at times cumbersome. Um, that's no excuse for what happened in my previous video about the DJI Neo and the leaks that we got initially for it. There was a photo in that video where it showed what appeared to be packaging for the DJI Neo. And what was noteworthy on that photo was the package that comes with, or the combo that comes with the DJI Neo in that particular photo. I was led to believe in that photo that you would have the DJI Neo as well as the DJI FPV controller too and the DJI FPV goggles too, or maybe three, I don't know for sure. But this was actually a pretty obviously doctored photo and I just happened to miss that obvious sign that this was doctored. A lot of you pointed it out and the sign that really gave things away was the little symbol for the propellers that were included in the packaging. Now, if you look at photos of the DJI Neo that have been leaked to this point, you'll see that the drone itself uses a tri-blade propeller configuration. In this photo that I shared in my previous video, it was a fan blade style propeller, the kind that you see in the DJI Avada 1. And that just was a dead giveaway that I completely missed, and I want to apologize for that. I'm gonna redact what I said when it comes to this drone's compatibility with the FPV peripherals from DJI. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and redact that and make a new statement and say, this drone probably won't be compatible from gate, with the DJI FPV peripherals. I think that we're going to have a GPS style drone that is built for simple flying for beginners, as well as operations over people in a safe manner. That's what I think this drone is really purposed to do is serve as a selfie style drone that has autonomous flight modes that are easy to understand and use. It's going to be very user friendly. And for those of us that are experienced drone pilots and want an option to safely fly over people without having to jump through the hoops that the FAA requires for either getting a waiver for a larger drone or complying with categories two and three, this drone is going to be built 
for us, those of us that don't want to jump through all of those hoops. I don't think it's going to have FPV compatibility with the peripherals from DJI right out of gate, but maybe down the road there will be a firmware update that's sent out once the drone has been on shelves for a while and they want to freshen it up a little bit. They'll add that compatibility and allow you to fly it with an FPV peripheral setup. So again, I'm really sorry. This is difficult to do sometimes when you're speculating, when you're sifting through a lot of data, a lot of information. Sometimes things do slip through the cracks. It's my responsibility to make sure it doesn't, and I let you down on that one. So I do apologize, and I'm sorry if I got anybody's hopes up. The fact is though, this drone is still pretty cool even without that FPV peripheral compatibility. So still keep your ear to the ground when it comes to information about it. So that does it for all of the latest information when it comes to the DJI Neo leak camp. Let's move on to the other side of this coin coming to us in the form of Zero Zero Robotics. Zero Zero Robotics on the heels of all of this information leaking about the DJI Neo has officially announced, this isn't a leak, this is an official announcement from the company that they are releasing two new versions of the Hover Air X1. These two new drones are, will be called the Hover Air X1 Pro and the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. And they have some specs available on their website that I'm going to share with you right now. Let's kick things off with the Hover Air X1 Pro. This is going to be the more basic of the two new drones from Zero Zero Robotics. However, I use that term very, very loosely because it is anything but basic, especially when you compare it to the original Hover Air X1. It's got a half inch CMOS sensor on board capable of shooting 4K at 60 frames per second or 1080p at 120 frames per second, guaranteeing you're going to get a nice clean resolution with with buttery smooth footage. It's gonna have a total flight time of 16 minutes and its takeoff weight will be 192 grams, which means this drone is safe for operations over people as the propellers are totally encased, much like the previous version of the Hover Air X1, meaning that there's no way that they can cause laceration to a person upon impact. It has a new feature that I'm not totally clear on called Omni-Terrain. Now, the way it's been explained to me and the research that I've conducted leads me to believe that this feature will allow the drone to more easily operate autonomously over water, snow, and the edges of cliffs, which means you're going to get more diverse shot selections when it comes to the autonomous flight modes. It has an auto follow speed of 26 miles per hour or 42 kilometers per hour. It has an instant tracking speed of 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour, both extremely impressive for a drone this size. It has obstacle avoidance now, rear active collision avoidance on this drone, which means you'll be able to do pull away and backward style shots without having to worry too much about running into bigger obstacles. It also has a wind rating of level five, which means it should be able to withstand 19 to 24 mile per hour winds. Now, if that's not enough for you, Zero Zero Robotics is here to make you happy and scratch the itch that you're feeling in this category of drone with the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. What is definitively the top of the product line for Zero Zero Robotics and the top of the product line in this particular category of drones, the Hover Air X1 Pro Max will have a sensor size of one over 1.3 inches. Not only is that bigger than the sensor size on the Hover Air X1 Pro and the DJI Neo, it is the same sensor size you can find on the DJI Mini 3, Mini 4 Pro, Avada 2, and the DJI Air 3, which is nuts to think about. This drone has a huge sensor for the category it falls into. It also is able to shoot 8K video at 30 frames per second. You heard me correctly, 8K at 30 frames per second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 k at 30 frames per second you can also shoot in hdr at 4k at 60 frames per second or in the new slow-mo mode for the hover air x1 pro max at 4k at 120 frames per second a ton of flexibility in the video resolutions and frame rates for the hover air x1 pro max really really impressive stuff and if that wasn't impressive enough, this drone is also going to be capable of shooting 10-bit HLG video, which means you're going to get just absolutely vibrant, rich color out of this drone. It is going to be fantastic if what they're saying is true about the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. It also has vision-based collision detection. I would assume this means it will have the rear sensors you'll find on the Hover Air X1 Pro, as well as the ability to read, detect, and avoid obstacles using the front-facing camera that you will also be shooting your content with. It also has Wi-Fi 6 comm system for more reliable linking to your phone or device, and all other specs are the exact same as the Hover Air X1 Pro, making this drone, the Hover Air X1 Pro Max, definitively, again, 
definitively the best drone in this particular category that is including the DJI Neo. It appears that Zero Zero Robotics is not backing down from DJI's pseudo declaration of war in this particular category of drones. In fact, they're not just not backing down, they're doubling down literally, by releasing these two drones on the heels of the DJI Neo. What I'm going to be most interested to see with these new products from Zero Zero Robotics, the Hover Air X1 Pro and Hover Air X1 Pro Max, is whether or not they will have a dedicated receiver or controller for these drones. That was one glaring flaw with their predecessor, the Hover Air X1. There is the ability to link that to a controller, but it wasn't sold with the drone, and you actually had to go out of your way to purchase it separately, which isn't the end of the world, but the fact is the phone interface was garbage. The only real value that you had when you bought the base model or the base package for the Hover Air X1 is that the autonomous flight modes were really, really good, and the video was pretty good as well. So if Zero Zero Robotics can develop these drones to ensure that they are effective two-way systems, meaning they're effective as selfie drones and they're effective with direct interface via a dedicated RC, I think we have quite the battle to look forward to in this particular category of drones between Zero Zero Robotics and DJI. I am really excited about this because while I love DJI and the products they produce, I think they do it better than anybody else in the industry on the whole, competition is always a good thing to see. We haven't seen DJI really pushed like this since Autel started to release consumer and prosumer drone platforms. It's really exciting, and the more competition there is in the industry, the better it is for all of us. We all win in this instance. So I'm really excited for the prospects of the Hover Air X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. I think it's a good thing for the industry, and if they really can hold their ground, if not completely push DJI back out of this category for for now, I think it's going to be really great for the industry and it'll be great for Zero Zero Robotics and maybe open some opportunities for them to get into higher level consumer drones and prosumer platforms potentially in the future. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. It helps me out a lot. It helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you get subscribed if you haven't already. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the bell icon too. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek and I am out of here. See ya! Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rock.